Welcome to Discovering. Living here in the UP, we all spend our share of time in the woods, so we know our trees inside and out. Or do we? The white pine, five needles. This is the red pine. Tonight we'll take a close look at how to identify some of the tree species found here in the UP. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure. The only way I measure feelings that I have for this fine land. There is so much to discover when you're a long time lover of northern Michigan. There are 36 different tree species native to the Upper Peninsula, and I'm sure most of us can tell a maple from a pine or an aspen from a cedar. But many of these species have variations. There's red oak and white oak, black ash and white ash, sugar maple, red maple, quaking aspen, big tooth aspen, white pines, jack pines, red pines, spruce, balsam, the list goes on. I met with Dickinson County Conservation District Forester A.J. Campbell for a closer look at how to tell the difference. Most people in the UP know how to identify the quaking aspen tree, which is commonly referred to as popple. The quaking aspen has a leaf that's heart shape. The edges of the leaf are fairly smooth, where the big tooth aspen has noticeable teeth. The big tooth aspen is a slightly longer lived tree, and the wood quality is often higher in older big tooth aspen. A good way to tell the difference between quaking aspen and big tooth aspen is the bark. The quaking aspen, especially towards the top, has very white bark. And if you look at the big tooth aspen, the bark is yellowish, almost an olive green color, uh, depending on the light. And when you have the two growing next to one another, the difference in the bark is very obvious. The leaves of both types of aspens flutter in the wind because the petiole, which attaches the leaf to the branch, is flat. They're typically round and more rigid on most deciduous trees, so that flatness is unique and it's what causes the fluttering. Popple trees have to grow in full sunlight. So after an area is cleared of trees, whether it be from a wildfire or a severe windstorm, or more likely a clear cut, the popple regenerates densely from the root system of the trees that were cut down. And as the new popple stand grows up uh, and the trees get bigger, they thin themselves out. And then there is open area underneath them that gets filled in with more shade tolerant trees like eastern white pine or soft maple or balsam fir and spruce. Uh, those are all trees you commonly find growing underneath an older popple stand like the one we're looking at now. Popple trees, they grow really fast but they don't live very long. Uh, as you can see, this tree right here is starting to die and as the popple trees die, these more shade tolerant trees that have been growing underneath them will start to grow faster because there's an increased amount of sunlight in the gap created by the dead popple. And then one of those or two of those trees will grow up and replace the popple. And that's how forests change over time. Uh, a close relative of the aspen species we have is the balm of Gilead. It's also called popple in the UP. Uh, it tends to grow on wetter sites. Uh, it has a leaf that's slightly longer and more pointed. It's not as heart-shaped as the aspen. Uh, it also has a unique smell. It's a sort of sweet smell, and it has these long buds that are really resinous and sticky if you touch them. I call it balm of Gilead. A lot of people call it balm, or you even hear people call it bam. Uh, another name for it is balsam poplar. They are all common names for that species.
our northern hardwood forests are typically dominated by sugar maple. Other species that grow with sugar maple in those forests are white ash, basswood, yellow birch, um, American beech, and then some conifers like hemlock, white pine, balsam fir. Uh, this is an example of yellow birch. Noticeably different bark than its relative, the white birch. This is the white birch. Some people call it a paper birch. It has this very, very white color and the bark flakes uh, the way it does on uh, the other birches like yellow birch. White birch often grows on poorer soils. It can grow where it's very wet. It can grow where it's very dry. It's a fast growing tree and it's a fairly short lived tree. It has the same life expectancy as an aspen or a fir. You know, they get above 60, 70 years, they really start to deteriorate. The yellow birch, on the other hand, is a slower growing, but longer lived tree. You know, a yellow birch is like a sugar maple where it could grow to be a couple hundred years old, potentially. This is a Northern red oak. It's the most common oak species uh, in the UP, and it's one of the most common tree species in Michigan. Most people know how to tell an oak leaf. It has these dips called sinuses and then these points that stick out called lobes. The lobes are pointed and have these small stiff hairs at the end of the lobes. This is a bur oak. It is a type of white oak and it's the most common white oak that you would find in the UP. The lobe of a white oak leaf is rounded where the lobe of a red oak leaf is pointed and has a hair sticking off the end of it. The bur oak leaf is also much wider towards the top than it is at the base. The bark of a red oak tree tends to be smooth and the bark of a bur oak tree tends to be corky. On these larger northern red oaks, the bark develops this pattern that people refer to as ski trails. There are these smooth sections and then there's a fissure in between it and then there's another smooth section and then a fissure. So these wide smooth sections running down the tree look kind of like ski trails. Red oak acorns take two years to develop on the tree before they're mature and fall off. The white oak acorns only take one year to develop. All oak trees have years where they develop what are called bumper crops, where they produce a tremendous amount of acorns. And they do that at irregular intervals. And the different tree species have different intervals. So a red oak might produce a bumper crop every few years, or a white oak might only produce a bumper crop every five to seven years. In between bumper crop years, acorn production can be minimal to non-existent. Um, and even in a bumper crop year, almost all of the acorns can be eaten by animals or destroyed by insects before they develop into oak seedlings. Uh, the acorn is a very valuable food source for a large number of animals uh, game species like deer and turkey. Bears also eat them. Small mammals, squirrels and chipmunks and things like that eat them. So there are a lot of things that prevent acorns from developing into oak seedlings. This is the soft or red maple, but the soft maple leaf has three main lobes. It has a reddish tinge to the petiole, which is the stem that attaches the leaf to the woody stem. And the new growth of the soft or red maple is often reddish in color. Soft maples also have smooth, light gray bark. This is the sugar maple or hard maple. Uh, it has the classic maple leaf. It, like ash, has the opposite leaf arrangement. The difference between the red maple and the sugar maple in the leaf is that the sugar maple has five distinct lobes where the Red maple has three distinct lobes that are much more round in shape. The lobes of the sugar maple are a little pointier. Sugar maple trees that are younger uh, tend to have smooth, light gray bark. It's a little rougher than red maple bark. Red maple bark is very smooth to the touch even when it's young. Sugar maple bark appears smooth when it's young, um, but it is a little rougher when you touch it. And then as the trees get older, and larger, the bark gets rougher and starts to get platy. This is a 
a jack pine, and jack pine is one of the three pine species in the UP. Uh, it typically grows on sandy soils. It can grow on some of the droughtiest, driest soils there are in the UP. A pine is a family of trees that contains all of the so-called conifers in the UP. But this is actually a pine tree. The thing about pine trees is that they have needles that are in bundles called fascicles. And with jack pine, the fascicles have two needles always, and they're short and they're thick and they're stiff. The bark, it's very rough bark. Jack pine is a species that retains its cones in the crown. Then eventually if a fire comes along, the cones are covered in wax and the heat from the fire will melt the wax on the outside of the cone and open the cone and then the seeds will fall down into the ground. And so jack pine is a tree that's dependent on occasional forest fires for it to reproduce. This is a red pine. The thing that stands out about red pine to me is the reddish color of the bark. As it gets older, it tends to get platy like this, but when it's younger, it's usually a little flakier, uh, but it's always red in color, which is an easy way to identify the red pine. Like jack pine, red pine needles are in bundles of two always, but the red pine needle is much longer than the jack pine needle. Also, red pine needles are brittle and they'll break clean if bent in half. Most pine needles would just continue to bend because they're very flexible. This is an Eastern white pine. It used to be uh, the most valuable tree in the UP. When settlers first came to this area, they called it the white pinery because a lot of the landscape was covered in very large white pines and at the time those were very desirable for lumber. A lot of that lumber was shipped to build our cities in the Midwest. Today white pine is not nearly as valuable commercially but it's a very valuable tree for a lot of wildlife. It provides good cover for our game species. Um, a lot of animals roost in this tree. White pines always have five needles in a bundle which makes them unique because the red pine and the jack pine, which are the only other two native pines in the UP, have two needles. Overall, the white pine canopy looks soft in appearance. I think the red pine and the jack pine have a harder appearance, and the red pine almost looks like it has balls of needles on the end of its long branches. This is a balsam fir. In terms of total trees, this is the most common tree in Michigan. Some trees have a lot more wood volume, like sugar maple, but balsam fir in total abundance is our most common tree. That's because it's very shade tolerant and it grows in the understory of almost all of our forest types. Unlike pine, which has long needles that are in bundles, fir has needles that come off the main woody branch as individuals. You'll notice you can't roll it because it's flat. Fir trees, have flat needles, and that's a good way to remember that. You also notice that it has two white stripes. Spruce trees have needles that come off the woody branch on small pegs. These little bumps along the branch each have a needle coming off of them. And all spruce trees have needles that are square in cross section, so you can roll them around in your finger like a square toothpick. So fir needles are flat, and spruce needles are square. The pine family contains pine trees, spruce trees, fir trees, and tamarack trees, and they're all considered conifers because uh, they're cone-bearing and they're in the pine family. The northern white cedar is also a cone-bearing evergreen tree, but it is not in the pine family. It's in the Cupressaceae family, which contains other species like eastern red cedar and bald cypress, uh, and some of these really unique species. It's a very valuable tree for a large number of animals. Uh, most people are aware of how important it is for deer. It's also valuable as a timber tree. It's cut and sold to a lot of mills in Menominee County. They make it into mulch. They make it into lumber and fence posts and other fence material. Northern white cedar, uh, does have difficulty regenerating in this part of the UP. Uh, there are other parts of Michigan where northern white cedar will regenerate naturally if it's harvested uh, using the best silvicultural methods, but in southern Dickinson County and Menominee County and Delta County, 
where they do harvest it, foresters and loggers are often seeing that it's not growing back readily. Hemlock's another tree that's really, really valuable for wildlife habitat. It's great winter cover. Hemlock and cedar often grow in the same places. Hemlock, I often see it growing with yellow birch and ash, some of these wetter soils. Okay. Hemlock needles are very similar to fir needles in that they're flat and can't be rolled around in your fingers. Also like fir needles, hemlock have white stripes on the underside, but hemlock needles are much shorter than fir needles. Cedar and hemlock are the two trees in the UP that have the potential to live the longest. Um, some of our trees are really short-lived and rarely make it to 100 years, but the, uh, hemlock can live to be 600 years old, and a white cedar can easily live to be 400 years old. Neither of these trees have a lot of pest or disease problems at the moment, and so they have the potential to live for a really, really long time. Beach is a very common component of hardwood forests in the central and eastern UP. If you move much further west than Norway in the UP, you stop finding beach in the forests. It has this very, very smooth gray bark. The beech leaf is a, an oval shaped leaf that's pointy and it has teeth and it's sort of wavy in between these veins. And in the fall, when the trees set their buds for the year, the buds are very long and shaped like a spear. Beech trees and oak trees are very closely related. Oaks are actually in the beech family and like oaks, beech trees produce a nut called a beech nut that's very, very valuable to a lot of wildlife. Beech trees are similar to aspen trees in that if they're cut down, they send up a whole bunch of uh, sucker sprouts off of their root system and it can create these really dense stands of young beech stems, uh, and a lot of people call it beech brush. After the leaf has uh, gone dormant and lost all of its chlorophyll and photosynthetic, photosynthetic ability, so the leaf is essentially a dead leaf, but the tree still holds on to it. Uh, beech is one of the trees that holds its leaves in the fall. Uh, oak trees do it as well. Ironwood trees are also known to hold on to their leaves in the fall. This is the American elm tree. Um, it's actually rare to see an elm tree this large. A lot of them around the country were killed uh, by a disease called the Dutch elm disease, which is a type of fungus. Uh, in the UP though, uh, in Dickinson and Menominee County, occasionally you'll still see uh, one or a few large trees like this. This is the leaf, it has teeth. If you touch it, it feels very thick and it also feels kind of rough, almost like sandpaper at the base the one side coming up to the mid vein does not line up with the other side. American elm trees have really quirky bark. There's really no distinct pattern to the bark. All trees in the elm family have a very unique way of growing. Uh, most trees grow up and out, so vertically and horizontally. Most of the elm growth is up. And so they take on this really distinct vase shaped uh, growth form, which is why they were always uh, such a popular street tree. So on white and green ash trees, you'll notice a diamond shaped pattern in the bark. Black ash bark is quirky and it doesn't have really a distinct pattern like the green or the white ash. Black ash is a swamp species. It tends to grow in wet soils. Uh, you're likely to find white ash in sugar maple stands, or what we call our northern hardwood stands. And green ash grows in wetter areas, uh, but it tends to grow in more productive wet areas, maybe a stand that has a stream moving through it where the soil is a little better drained. This is an ash leaf. The black ash leaflet is attached directly to the petiole, where a green or a white ash leaflet has a small stem that attaches it to the main petiole. The branches come off this branch opposite from one another. That's a unique characteristic of maple trees, ash trees, and dogwood trees. So that opposite uh, arrangement is unique and a good way to identify ash trees. Well, that's it for this week. 
Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next week right here on Upper Michigan's very own Discovering 